Hey everybody, it's Kirsten Jordan again, and today we are going to be talking about negotiating in New York City, which is the most difficult real estate market in the entire country, maybe the entire world, because it's filled with so many people who have a ton of money. Let's be clear here. How do you negotiate and get everything you want in this market, in this place? Well, I have all the tips for you, so listen up. The number one thing you need to know in any negotiation in real estate, especially in New York City, is the local market. What's so special about the five boroughs of New York City is that every single one is so unique. So the first thing you need to do in the process of your research, whether you're a buyer or a seller, is to understand the real market that the home you're interested in or the home that you're selling should really be located in. For example, let's say it's prime Brooklyn Heights and you know that you're on one of the best streets in prime Brooklyn Heights. Well, how do you value your home? Well, you need to look at the other homes that are just like yours that have sold or are on the market or under contract in your sub neighborhood, in your micro market. And if you're a buyer, it's the same thing. You need to make sure that you understand what you're looking at and you can't start borrowing other sales that are completely outliers that maybe aren't even remotely near what you're talking about. Otherwise you're talking about comparing apples to pineapples and that's not really a great way to value a home or use in your negotiation tactics. And then my next piece of advice is for buyers out there. Remember, if you are about to make your first offer, what New York City sellers wanna see is they wanna see a proof of funds, they wanna see a mortgage pre-approval letter, they wanna know that you can actually buy the property. I always get this from some of my buyers that they don't wanna show everything they have. They don't want that seller to know that they have a ton of money because then they're gonna be like, oh, well, they can pay up for it, they can buy it. Well, it's actually the opposite. Sellers really want to know that you can actually close and that's who they want to negotiate with because otherwise, honestly, it's a complete and total waste of their time. So if you are financing, that means having a real pre-approval letter, which takes a real process with your bank of sending them a lot of the materials that they need to see. And if you're buying all cash, that means you need to show them some really nice bank statements so they can believe that you can really get to that closing table with no issues. Don't be so shy and don't be so bashful about really proving to that seller that you can close as soon as you say you can. After you've proven to the seller that you can actually buy the home and you're ready to come in with your major offer where maybe you come in a little higher than you thought you wanted to but you really want that place or maybe you're coming in a little bit lower than you think the seller's even gonna consider, you need to think about the flexibility and maybe the creativity of that offer. In a lot of cases, it's not just about the numbers, it's about the terms of your bid. In cases where you have a seller that maybe plans on wanting to live in the home for a couple of months after the closing because they're still getting their act together to be able to buy their other home, that maybe for you, that's not a big deal. You can close on the home, you can file your plans for any whatever kind of renovation you plan on doing, and then you can let that seller live there a little bit longer, which is convenient for them, and then maybe they give you a little extra discount on the price. Or maybe it has to do with some other kind of flexible terms around letting the dog that's buried in the backyard stay there. These are just examples of how to appeal to a seller when you're coming in with an offer in a competitive bidding situation, or a scenario where maybe you're coming in a little bit lower than you know you should, and you wanna make sure that they don't reject your offer altogether and not even come back to you with a counter offer. Now that we've talked about a couple ways to make sure that your offer is really strong and maybe interesting, let's talk about the opening offer itself. I know so many buyers out there, especially as the market shifts, they're really interested in making sure that they can come in really strong and they wanna get every last dollar from that seller. As the market corrects, you think that you are the one with the power because you're a buyer that's ready to transact right now, and I totally understand that. But the other thing you need to remember is that these sellers have owned these homes in a lot of cases for a long time. Maybe they raised their family there, and maybe they think the home is worth a little bit more than you think it's worth. That's all the reason to come in with a very strong offer when you make your initial bid. In a lot of cases, coming in strong and showing a seller that you really care about the home is a great way to put yourself up front and in the right light with maybe an emotional situation with a seller that really, really cares about the home that you're about to buy. 
Now you're in the ideal scenario. You have made an opening bid, it was strong, you appealed to the emotional sensitivity of the seller, and your seller has come back to you with a counter offer. So we have this great counter offer and we're ready to come back and try to get the deal done. This is the opportunity that you have to use what you know about the current market conditions, which means if it's a seller's market or a buyer's market, obviously this has to do with monetary terms and the actual number, and knowing where your seller's head is at, how can you make sure that you appeal to the emotional sensitivity of that seller. This is a really good opportunity to work on non-monetary terms where you can give the seller a little bit more of what they want that isn't necessarily financially related and you don't have to give up an extra bunch of money. This could mean giving them an out on some issues that you found during the inspection. It could mean that you give them an out, obviously that has to do with some post-closing occupancy. Think about these different aspects as you're coming back with a final bid because in a lot of cases you want to eliminate too much back and forth. And now, boom, you have a deal. But wouldn't you be so happy to have somebody else completely handle this process for you? Buyers agents do an incredible job of helping negotiate on the behalf of the buyer and understanding where they can really push to get an additional discount and most importantly, the best terms possible so that the entire experience is as seamless as humanly possible and you get into that home when you wanted to with the terms that you wanted. And that's all I have to say about negotiations. I loved talking to you about this topic because obviously there's so much more to talk about and intricacies about all the different submarkets of this city and what you can use to get even more discount on that property when you're bidding in a buyer's market or as a seller, how you can get top dollar for your home. But I digress. I think you should send this to anybody that you think would be interested in it. So like, share, subscribe, comment below. I wanna hear from you. And if there's any other topic that you're interested in hearing about, please send us a note because I have so much to say about so many things in New York City real estate.